this is an example problem for projectile motion. We're going to let a ball be launched from a height of 1.2 meters above the horizontal. And uh, let's make that horizontal line. The ball has a speed of 36 meters per second at the launch. And it's going to land 73 meters downrange, horizontal distance, on a table that's 1.2 meters off of the ground. Three unknowns. We want to find the angle that the ball is launched with. We want to determine the maximum height, and we want to determine how long the ball is in the air. Well, projectile motion problems, we're working with an X and a Y. And for projectile motion near the Earth, if we ignore air resistance, then the acceleration in the X direction will be zero. And the acceleration in the Y direction, I'm going to let down be the negative. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'm working this problem with up as the positive direction. No acceleration in the X direction. That simplifies the X equation. In the X direction, we simply have X equals the original speed in the X direction, the component of this 36 meters per second in the X direction, and multiplied by the time that we're in the air. And we can do a little substitution here in symbols. This is V naught cosine theta multiplied by time. So that's what we have to work with in the X direction. And there are two unknowns here. We're going to need some help to uh, determine our our outcome here, and that help comes from the y equation. So in the y direction, I do not know the final velocity. Um, it's not given, let's say that. Um, we don't know the final velocity. Well, in some other context, you might talk to your instructor about the concept of symmetry between launch velocity and landing velocity. But uh, let's say we don't know it. That leads me to choose the equation that y equals y naught plus v naught in the y direction multiplied by the time in the air plus one half acceleration in the y direction and time in the air squared. Everything here is in the y direction. I will not use the 36 meters per second. I'll have to use the vertical component. I won't use zero for the acceleration. I'll use the minus 9.8. So very important you keep uh, in that y equation only numbers that belong in the y direction. So let's do a few uh, enter numerical entries here. So we're starting at 1.2 meters. I'm not going to write the uh, units here. We're in standard uh, metric system. The v naught in the y direction is v naught sine theta. And this is 36. I could have gone ahead and put that in. And time in the air. And plus 1 half minus 9.8 and time squared. So this problem is a little bit artificial in that we land and we uh, start at the same height. So I can subtract 1.2 from both sides and that will uh, cancel out. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to um, move this term to the left side. So it's going to be a minus 4.9 t squared here. I'm going to add 4.9 t squared to both sides. So I'm subtracting 1.2 from both sides. So I get a 0 and a 0. And now I'm going to add 4.9 t squared to both sides equals, I'm going to go ahead and put in the 36 for the v naught sine theta. So we have to unknowns. In this x, I can do just a little bit more. Uh, we have 73 meters for the range, 36 meters per second for the velocity, and then cosine theta and time. So I see here I have two equations and I have the same two unknowns. In this x equation, I'm going to solve for time. I'm going to solve for time and then substitute that in. <clears throat> so divide by 36 cosine theta. And I won't simplify the numbers just yet. I've divided both sides by 36. I've divided both sides by cosine theta. And now this t, I'm going to substitute into our uh, uh, 
y equation. And when I do that, I'm going to um, have to square, oh, <coughs> very bad. I dropped off the t. I was wondering why I was going to end up with a cosine squared. Um, but let's go ahead and take care of this now. Um, what are the two times when the y position is 1.2? One of them is when time equals 0. And if you would have factored here, you would have uh, and a 0 on the left. The one solution would be time equals 0. So one factor of t cancels off here. Now I'm ready to substitute t from the x equation. So I have 4.9 times the 73 divided by 36 cosine theta. So I had the 4.9. The rest of this is coming from substituting for the t. And it's no longer square. We canceled 1t from both sides. Equals 36 sine theta. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by cosine theta. Multiply both sides by cosine theta. Divide both sides by 36. And when I do that, I'm going to, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify the numbers here. So 4.9 times 73 divided by 36 divided by 36. That number is approximately 0 0.2760. And I'm going to pause here for just a second, get my calculator. OK, back with you. That There's something in that number that just looked a bit strange, but it is correct. <clears throat> and that equals sine theta multiplied by cosine theta. Now, in back of your physics book or in a trigonometry book, there is a trig substitution. If we would have uh, 2 times sine theta cosine theta, and we can produce that. If I multiply here by a 2 on the left side and the right side, I have to multiply both sides. Then we get 2 sine theta cosine theta. And that has a, a, a trig identity. And that identity is sine of 2 theta. So when I have 2 multiplied by sine theta by cosine theta, that can be rewritten as just one trig function but you double the angle, sine of 2 theta. And when we multiply by 2 here, approximately we get 0 0.5520. Um, how do we find the value of theta? Well, at this point, we should take the inverse sine of both sides. So we take the inverse sine of 0 0.5520 and the inverse sine I have to do the same function to both sides of sine of 2 theta. The sine, inverse sine and sine are uh, inverse functions of each other. And when we apply them both on this 2 theta, we end up just with 2 theta. Essentially, these two functions cancel each other. Um, so you're probably used to doing this with inverse tangent. Um, to solve for angles in a right triangle. Over here, we produce an angle. And if your calculator is in degree mode, approximately, this is 33.5 degrees. That's the value of 2 theta. If you then divide both sides by 2, we come up with one uh, part of the problem. Roughly 16.75 degrees is our value for the launch angle, 16.75 degrees. Um, it's somewhat reasonable for my sketch. Um, it's not bigger than 90 degrees, so we haven't made an error in taking inverse sine. Um, you can't get bigger than 90 degrees if you take inverse sine correctly and you're in degree mode. So how about the height? So part B, what's the height of the motion, the maximum height? Well, at the top, we can take advantage that the, for an instant, the final velocity is zero at the top of the motion. And let's say we don't know the time yet. That's going to be our third calculation. Then I would use the equation, the final velocity squared in the y direction is the initial velocity squared in the y direction. 
plus 2 times the acceleration in the y direction and y minus y naught. So at the top of the motion, we get a 0. For our starting um, y velocity, we now can compute that. 36 is the v naught meters per second and sine of the launch angle, which we know, 16.75 degrees, so this will be a number. And then plus 2 times minus 9.8. And then the maximum height minus, this is a little bit tricky, we're not starting at ground level. This maximum height is measured from the ground. So I do the final y position minus the initial y position. We started at 1.2 meters off of the ground. So if we, I'm mean again and multiply by 2 here, that'll be minus 19.6. I'm going to add 19.6 times y minus 1.2. So I get this uh, term over on the left side. So I have 19.6 y minus 1.2. And 36 times the sine of 16.75 degrees, and almost forgot to square it. Don't, don't forget to square it. Um, but uh, the 36 times the sine of uh, one point of so sine of 16.75 degrees. Um, if we do that calculation after squaring, roughly we get 107.672. So we take sine of 16.75 degrees first, get that number, multiply by 36, get a number. And now square that, and we get 107.672. Divide both sides by 19.6. That'll be the value of y minus 1.2. Then add 1.2 to both sides. Um, maybe I should throw that intermediate calculation. y minus 1.2 is roughly 5.493. And now add 1.2 to both sides, and we get the desired angle. How far above the ground are we? 6.69 meters. 6.69 meters. So I have to be a little bit careful here. We did not launch from ground level, so I have to account for that 1.2 meters as the why not. Now, for the uh, time that we're in the air, I'm going to take advantage that the time in the air is equal to 2 of the time to go up. In this uh, no air resistance situation, there's symmetry in the motion. The time to go up equals the time to come down. So I'm going to solve for the time to go up using the first kinematic equation. The final y velocity is the initial y velocity plus acceleration multiplied by time, everything in the y direction. Again, our uh, velocity in the vertical direction at the top of the motion is 0. The object still is moving in the x direction. That motion in the x direction does not affect motion in the y direction. So I have 0 at the top of the motion for the vertical uh, uh, component of the velocity. And again, we have 36 sine of 16.75 uh, degrees minus 9.8. And this is the time to go up. So I'm going to add 9.8 to uh, t to both sides. I'm going to evaluate here. And what I find is that the time to go up is roughly 1.0587 seconds. So the time in the air is double that, roughly 2.12 seconds. And we've solved our problem. In projectile motion, make a sketch. Decide which direction is going to be positive. Identify your accelerations. The x equation is always distance equals range times time. In the y equation, uh, choose one of the kinematic equations that matches what information you're given. We did not know the final velocity here. We're not given that number. So I chose the kinematic equation that does not have final velocity. Simplified the equations. Two equations, two unknowns, algebra to find theta. Find the uh, uh, height using the fourth equation that doesn't have time in it. These could have been done in the reverse order. And then uh, calculated the time. So hope you uh, 
practice on kinematic equations and projectile motion and ask your instructor some questions.